get started. Uh, thanks everyone for taking some time with me today, learning about how you can navigate a really uncertain time while also setting the stage for a stronger future. My name is Patrick King. I'm the founder of Imagine. We're a branding, advertising, and digital agency in Northern Virginia. Uh, by this time, I think we've all made some, made our immediate triage decisions. You know, we've we've made some really tough calls and I, I can really feel it in the conversations I'm having with our clients. And you've moved over to telecommuting or limiting service if you've needed to. Um, and a lot of us are going from the immediate planning, like what am I gonna do today, to more short term stuff, like how do I navigate the next three or four weeks? And that short term is where I'm gonna to focus today. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to throw them in the chat and I can answer them all uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, I've packed a lot into this webinar. We're gonna cover four main topics in this presentation. We're gonna talk about how your customer has changed, how businesses have successfully adapted to that change. Most of the time I'm gonna spend going over how you can get started doing things today to help your business in the short and long term. And then I'm gonna wrap up with what we know is coming at the tail end of the, the pandemic. Um, I'm glad to see so many businesses that are hanging in there through this. Uh, it's important to note that there are strong disparities that are clearly defined by industry and some are doing fine while uh, to others, we're living in a nightmare. Um, actually, those that work in some of the better off industries could be the ideal customers for businesses that aren't doing so great. Uh, I talked a couple of weeks back about how to build uh, personas and I can gladly uh, share that recording. Just send me an email. Um, as you can see, uh, these are the responses of, the, uh, of the, the, the question and the registration that I sent out about how, your, how their business is doing. And it's good to see that you know, a, lot of, a lot of you are hanging in there. Um, this, uh, this webinar is it's designed for, for everyone on the call in every, every situation that you're in. Um, most of my concern naturally goes to, to those that are either completely closed and wondering when to reopen or those that are, that are truly concerned about their, uh, about their survival. Um, the hit to them has been dramatic and I truly want to help any way I can. And I hope this webinar helps. Uh, let's start with the unavoidable, unignorable fact that your customer has changed. Um, <clears throat> this is something that of course matters the most to all businesses. Uh, their attitudes, perceptions, priorities, preferences, they've all changed significantly within a very short period of time. And you don't need me to tell you this, people are spending less overall. They're more cautious, they're overwhelmed with bad news with no real guidance, but they're also paying more attention online than usual which is understandable since they're stuck at home and you can only play so much Scrabble so many times before somebody gets hurt. Now, not only are they online more, but they're doing different things with their, their online time. What we're looking at here is, uh, is recorded online advertising traffic. These are click-throughs that are happening on various platforms and they've happened between March 1st and the end of last week. And uh, it shows that there's an increase in uh, an increase in click-throughs on YouTube ads, naturally, because people are watching videos. Uh, Google Display ads, uh, because they're showing up in content that people are already already seeing. Now, what we're what we're noticing here is they're taking far less deliberate action. Uh, so, actively seeking out things on Google, actively perusing Google Shopping, uh, Bing, I'm sorry, Bing. Um, they're taking less deliberate action and it may lead you to think they're also likely to purchase less. But check this out. What this chart shows is the increase in conversion rates across the board for pay-per-click advertising. So a lot of that display network stuff, ads on YouTube, stuff like that. And so while people's active behavior has changed, their passive behavior hasn't. They're still clicking on ads, 
they're still buying things. And now more than ever, there are fewer advertisers to compete with. So the competition and the pricing make this a great time to develop an online advertising strategy. So if you're already running one, excellent. Um, switch those search campaigns over to display ads. Uh, the cost per click and the conversions on those have always been, always been better anyway. Now, all of this is to say that your customers are still out there and they're still being customers. They're just doing it differently. So your approach to connecting with them has to change too. And for a lot of businesses, you know, some on this call, all of that's great, but if you don't have something to sell, then what are you gonna advertise? And I argue that you still have something to sell. You just need to rethink how it's packaged and presented. And we're undoubtedly on the cusp of a new economy. Um, business will no doubt be different as a result of what we're going through. But the companies that are strong at the end of this will be the ones that are working now to pivot and adapt to the change that we're in. Now, how business has responded. Uh, you may notice that I used a road trip concept for this presentation. And while that kind of makes sense, it's really because I love to travel and I'm really starved for some outdoor time. Um, so looking at these as I'm going, uh, it's like the next best thing to being out on the road. So once this is all over, I'm going to go travel like a crazy person. Anyway, I'd like to give some examples of what some businesses of different industries are doing now so that maybe they can give you some ideas of what to do with your business. The first is my favorite. They're a client of ours in Charleston, South Carolina. Their name is Cuban Gypsy Pantry. And they're a small Cuban restaurant run by a couple. They started with a food truck, then they moved to a small brick and mortar in downtown Charleston, and now they're in a huge space in North Charleston. And that sounds like great growth, uh, and we had just helped them launch the big location three weeks before all this hit. They hadn't even chance to get regulars yet. They were starting to get traction and we were working their marketing plan, but all things changed when they had to shut down. They quickly developed a plan to sell bulk meals that can be refrigerated. So they're doing high dollar uh, shipments and deliveries and that helped a little bit, but they came across something that surprisingly helped them turn the tide. And, and it is the Tiburon. It's basically a small Cuban party sub. I know, it's weird. It fits in a, pix, in a pizza box and they've been selling like crazy because families are all together. They may not want to buy something really big. Um, it seems kind of unconventional, maybe something they can try out. And then when people try it, they get hooked and they want to try more of what the, what the pantry offers. And it's simple but it's unique enough that it piques interest, it executes very well, and it drives repeat business. And when I say repeat business, they're busy. In fact, they're even hiring drivers. I'll repeat that. It's a restaurant during the pandemic hiring delivery drivers right now. It's insane. And it all came from finding one thing that's unique enough that people haven't tried yet. And, and, uh, but something that you can execute very well. Um, another story uh, is a nonprofit, and it's one that's near and dear to me. It's the American Marketing Association. Uh, we're gonna talk about the DC chapter. As with many nonprofits, their money comes from events. In their case, it's networkers and happy hours. And with no restaurants or bars and no groups larger than 10, there goes that idea. You couple that with the, the trend over the past few years, the trade associations across the board were already seeing dropping membership renewals and you've got some stuff to worry about. So as you expect, they went virtual. And I say they, but I'm, an income, I'm the incoming president, so I should say we. We didn't just mirror the in-person calendar to, from the existing stuff into just making it work for Zoom. Uh, we upped the programming and changed the content to things that marketers in a panic and fearing unemployment care about. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these we decided to, to, to give away for free. Um, there are webinars to help unemployed marketers with building their personal brand. 
which helps with their, their job hunt, or to help marketers still in their positions uh, truly understand how their profession is changing. We also developed a partnership with every surrounding chapter uh, to help promote each other's events, their events, their blog articles, other resources, so that we're giving more value to the membership, really as much as we possibly can. And it's not, we're not overextending ourselves, we're really just sharing resources. And so by amping up the content, broadening the reach, um, I feel pretty good about how we're making it through. Now, finally, and this is something that's going to look familiar to a number of uh, people on this webinar and something that, that I'm, I'm really happy to see, it's technically not a business. Rather, it's a group of businesses in and around Manassas, Virginia, that all decided to get together and rally around the restaurants and bars in Manassas Old Town District. Um, they've raised many thousands for bar employee relief, rent, for, rent relief for restaurants. They've done so through things like t-shirt sales, social media promotion. Um, they, they just did a promo to, uh, for sales of pint glasses uh, over at uh, the local brewery and a ton of other campaigns. As I said before, not all industries are struggling. So when the ones that are doing well come together to support those that are struggling, wonderful things can happen. All of these cases are where an opportunity was found within a challenge. Some are long-term, some are just designed to get through the next few months. And it's not always easy. If you're, if you're having trouble finding opportunity, reach out, we'd like to help any way that we can. Uh, next, I'm gonna go over some concrete steps, approaches, and uh, kind of a, a, a frame of mind uh, that you can adopt now um, that can ensure the survival, if not growth, of your business. Uh, first, adjust your marketing message. Adjust it to reflect a voice of empathy. Uh, Reevaluate the messaging on your website, social media, any paid campaigns you have going now, um, your email marketing, every bit of communication to focus more on building community during this time and giving people something that they can identify with. Uh, the big saying that I'm using now with, uh, with our clients is connect now, convert later. Um, and you can you know, share your, the enthusiasm and passion about your company uh, with your customers, use your social media platforms and help give them a sense of, a sense of belonging, all right? I'm gonna give a really good example. And it's a good example for a few reasons. First, this is from Mr. Chris Sellers of CJ Thins. He's uh, not only uh, a neighbor of ours, but, uh, but just all around great guy. All right, so what he's doing for, for his uh, restaurant right now, uh, he's posting just from his own personal Facebook page, which is, uh, which is a better strategy than using a business, business Facebook page because Facebook likes to muffle the, the reach that company pages get. Uh, with each post, He's genuine, upbeat, grateful, and it, it, perfect messaging. And of course, it's food, so of course the, Im the images are gonna be a hit. Uh, what makes these posts super effective is, as well as not coming from a company Facebook page, but he sends them out of his personal account and tags all of the people he considers like influencers in his personal network. So it's like, it's like a micro-influencer marketing campaign. And as you can see from the, from the engagement, it works and it's continued to work for well over a month. I haven't seen a drop in it. One really cool thing that he did though uh, was, was a couple days before Easter, uh, he, he became the, uh, the recipient of a bunch of eggs that had to be used. And if I remember correctly, there were, it was like 90 dozen. And, and uh, it was like, I've got an idea. So, what he's going to do is for 20 bucks, you could have a volunteer um, come to your house on Saturday night before Easter with bunny ears on 
and come and distribute the eggs around the yard and leave the basket on the front porch for kids in the morning. It was a brilliant idea. Um, so immediately we hopped on it, uh, put a story in Prince William Living Magazine, promoted the hell out of it. He ended up, he ended up cutting it off at 220 uh, dozen. And stuff like that didn't make him a ton of money, but it, what it did do is give him a ton of visibility. And now there are far more families that now have an affinity for CJ Finns, where they might not have had it before. And as a matter of fact, uh, we helped distribute some of them. And one of the, one of the families said, you know what, this is why CJ Finns is, go is gonna outlast this pandemic because of stuff like this. And I totally agree. Um, now, too often, I see the wrong approach taken with marketing during this crisis. I get at least a dozen sales emails a day that start with, quote unquote, during these uncertain times or something similar. Uh, people are starving for empathy, optimism, a sense of normal. And leading with that kind of talk is just reminding people of what they already know. Yeah, um, here are a couple of these couple examples. Um, these were, these were uh, shared on uh, slate.com, I think. And these are real emails that are going out. Um, and they are, they are cringy. Um, the first one, it's a, it's a restaurant concept, right? And they're, and in their email, they say, healthcare professionals, we appreciate you. Starting today, enjoy a buy one, get one stir fryer salad, blah, 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 blah. That's cringy. Another one, from a beauty retailer. I want to check in, wish you well. Thank you for being here. We're so lucky to have you as part of our Julep family. As a special thanks, I want to give you 60% off everything. Come on, shop now. Those are terrible. Do not go for a sale dur during this period because it's, it's, you can see right through it. And that's not what, what people need right now. That's not long-term thinking. That right there is short-term thinking. And even, and even worse than that, um, I saw this ad on a, on a website I was on recently. So resorts are still spending money on ads like this. As I said before, check your website, social, ad campaigns, all that stuff. Make sure you're not being tone deaf as well. Next, it's time for digital transformation. And if this term's new to you, don't be nervous. It's just a fancy way of saying, take advantage of the internet. We're all doing it in one way or another, but now's the time to try to make the most of it. Um, we're already doing video conferencing, right? Um, but now leverage more social media monitoring, um, social listening, online collaborative tools, Dropbox, and so on. Um, since this started about six weeks ago, uh, we've helped a handful of restaurants around the neighborhood move their operations online. It's used either free or reduced cost and because we really just want them to keep the lights on. Um, what some retail places should check out is the, the uh, Google Merchant Center. And it allows small businesses to quickly get products listed while, getting a, while they're getting a more sophisticated e-commerce platform up and running in the background. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that Google Shopping uh, search results are down, but if you use Google, uh, Google Merchant Center or Google, Google Shopping, if you use that in conjunction with a Google Display Network campaign, then you're bucking that trend. Um, another thing that, uh, that shops should look into is uh, finance companies like Affirm. Um, it allows customers to finance purchases, even as low as like $50 items. Um, and giving that option could be the difference between somebody buying now or having to wait. All right. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, I encourage you to consider video content as well. Since the beginning of March, uh, online activity, of course, has shifted dramatically. Um, but now that's where they're all looking and it does not have to be a Hollywood production. Uh, even a simple one can work wonders. As a matter of fact, uh, the, more, the more real and genuine you come across, the better. Um, ways that you can use it. Uh, if you're a consultant, use it to give tips. 
Um, if you're a venue and you rely on people to be on site, bring the experience to them through footage and you speaking the passion you have for your business. Um, I want to, I'll show you an example of a really quick, simple video that we did last week. We had a shoot where I asked four simple but commonly searched questions about this attorney's area of practice. Each question will ultimately be its own video and they'll run for about a minute. Uh, we turned the first one around in about a day. Anyway, anyway, I'll stop yapping and, and show you. People often come in and say they want to get a legal separation. What I think they're really talking about in the state of Virginia is that they are looking to have a separation agreement, which is a contract between husband and wife. That contract will bind and govern them on how they interact during their separation period, as well as generally the way I prefer to do it is to have everything encompassed in it. So a property distribution, a access schedule and allocation of authority between parents for the children. And from that agreement, that will simplify the divorce process. And the only way you get to divorce is through the status change of a divorce proceeding in court. Right, so it's quick, it's simple, um, and it accomplishes a number of different things. One, um, and, and first, it, I'm, I'm totally aware that, um, that having a lot of couples stuck in the house together for a long time um, might make this video, unfortunately, more popular than it would be otherwise. But uh, what this does is it, it connects, it, it adds a face to a company, and it gives insight, and it helps with creating that connection. And so this is one of the many ways that you can work toward my next topic, which is connecting with your customers and employees. Last week, I got a call from out of the blue by someone that works at our local chamber of commerce, and she was simply checking in on us, saying what we're up to. We talked for about 15 minutes, I guess, on how the country may open back up, you know, how we're seeing other businesses change and, you know, response to the pandemic, small talk, pretty much. Um, after the call was over, I heard from a fellow chamber member that was reached out to by a different chamber employee. And for her, it was, an, it was just an email that said, hey, contact us if you need anything. Yeah, well, she already knew she could do that. Um, that was a wasted opportunity on the Chamber's part to try to keep a member. Uh, email marketing is fine. It's fine for broad outreach, but don't let it replace the sound of your voice. Your customers are uncertain, and hearing a calm and an understanding voice is what they could really use right now. In fact, it could have a profound impact on how they get through their day. And you don't need to have answers. You don't need to even have much of a reason for a call other than to just see how they're doing. And you'll be amazed at how much you can learn from them about what they're going through and how much insight you're able to give them. It'll also help you reconnect as people and remind your customers that you really care about them as individuals. And in the same spirit, make sure to keep connected with your employees and team members as well. You know, they're just as afraid as anyone else and with unemployment, you know, topping 20%, I think, uh, something I read on Fortune. Um, when you factor the pre-existing unemployment with what's happening over recent weeks, you know, you know what's keeping them up at night. And at Imagine, we're having Zoom calls every day, if only just to check in, have, tell a few jokes, ask a couple of questions, um, you know, or maybe just show each other funny backgrounds, you know, you know, whatever. Um, or uh, one way to get people involved is, um, you know, or order a llama. Yeah, a llama. There's a farm you can find online that lets you order a farm animal to sit on your Zoom call for like 10 minutes. You know, plan a virtual happy hour or even just a team meeting and tell them that there's a live goat on the call 
they'll show up. To uh, sort of sum up on the, this section, uh, first, check your existing messaging, making sure your tone's right. Um, increase empathy and gratitude in your ongoing messaging. Embrace digital transformation, leverage video. Increase human contact through calls, video conferences, farm animals, whatever. And remember to connect now to convert later. And I want to talk about exiting the pandemic. Um, this is undoubtedly an incredible business challenge we're all facing. It's a challenge that many businesses simply will not make it through. But we will all, as people, exit this pandemic at some point, and when we do, expect utter insanity. People are going to make up for lost time. The hit on their personal finances may determine the length of the insanity, but restaurants and hospitality businesses look to benefit a great deal when, when, this, when it, this resurgence comes. Um, I just saw this today. Uh, Centro, um, who does programmatic advertising, released results from a Harris poll taken this month, and the increase in hotel stays may be gradual, and that makes sense since the use of hotel room, it implies a trip and more than just a night out. Um, if you have an old town district or a town center, um, expect the first couple of weeks of freedom to be absolutely bonkers, but I'm sure it's a bonkers that a lot of businesses are looking forward to. Now, to prepare for that, companies need to spend less time and money on audience growth and invest more in boosting the customer experience, providing value to their audience and empathizing with their clients and prospects since they might be making incredibly difficult decisions. When we start getting back to normal, your audience is going to remember all of these encounters that they had with the companies they dealt with along the way. And the experiences you provide them now will stick and your brand will be elevated as a result as we get out of this. And with that, I'll gladly take any questions. Wow, this is exactly half an hour. Cool. Okay, well, if there are no questions um, and questions come up later on, feel free to uh, send me an email, give me a call. Um, I am going to put zoom, zoom back and I'll put my contact information up just one more. Wow, that, this is a long one. Um, shoot me an email. Uh, Oh, Laura, Laura, uh, feel free to, to type the question in the chat. I'm, I'm watching that. And uh, uh, Bill Ryland, it is. This is being recorded, and I expect to probably have it up on uh, YouTube uh, probably by the end of the day. All right. Uh, once again, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for taking the time out of, out of your day to, uh, to, to tune in. And... Uh, Send me any questions you have and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.